Hi, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to install the FMF Factory 4.1 full exhaust system on our 2015 Honda Drum. FMF certainly more known for their off-road stuff. I got a little off-road uh, full system on my 50, my modded 50. Look at this can, carbon end cap, right? Bitchin', tiny little header. Welcome to mini bike modification mania. We are gonna make this ground super cool. We're gonna do a ton of videos. I'm gonna put a ton of parts on it. When I'm done with all that, I'm gonna sell this ground and somebody's gonna get a super great ground that's barely ever been ridden with a ton of really cool parts on it. Now, focusing on this, obviously, let's make sure the motor is cool. Tons of access here, right, on the mini bike. That's one of the best things about this. I mean, to get to the parts, super easy. We're gonna start by gaining access to the fasteners that hold on the actual canister itself. I took that fastener out, five Allen. This is a plastic shroud. I pulled down, it slid over like that. This will not be reused for this installation. Next up, I'm going to take out these two mounting fasteners. It's gonna be held in by 12 millimeter hex heads. There is actually a, allegedly a 2017 model of the Grom coming out. We're building a 2015, this goes good. We will build a 2017 after. I really don't expect a ton of changes. Honda's been pretty famous for keeping the small displacement stuff very, very similar from model year to model year. We've actually got a backup nut here. Finish that off. I will go around to the other side of the bike. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen the canister from the header, same T-hand. I've ridden this thing a little bit, not a lot. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty fun, it's pretty cool. Had it in the subdivision, all my neighbors, they were definitely digging on it, right? Not a lot of motorcycle people there, hardcore motorcycle people. And it was cool to see how well received the Mini was, right? Maybe a little less threatening, and they looked at it like something they could have a lot of fun with. Okay, so, wow. Not gonna lie, that's got a little girth to it. I'm not really concerned with weight loss on this, to be honest with you. I don't feel like we're working on a high performance machine. This is about making it sound and look a whole lot cooler than it does right now. I've got a, uh, another mount here. Well, they definitely had plenty of torque on those bolts. Looks like the uh, stock system here was spraying some little rusty water that might have been caught up in it. I'm going to wipe that off before I put my bike back together, of course. Okay, now all we have to do is loosen up the nuts here. Another 12 mil on these studs. Thing's brand new. It's coming apart super easy. I'm going to use a wrench on this because getting a socket on there was uh, didn't really have the access necessary because of that little heat shield. I don't feel like taking that off, so I'll just wrench that one. Another bitching thing about these little bikes, right, is uh, you're not going to have to be some world-class, right, former Rossi crew chief to be able to wrench on this bad boy yourself. Way less intimidating, okay? Okay, now, I pull that off. We're going to want to inspect our gasket situation up inside the head of the motor and uh, see where we're at there. Actually, it looks like I don't see a gasket. I'm probably going to use a little bit of high temp RTV in there just to improve the seal a little bit. 
And when we come back, we'll be ready to install our FMF header and canister. Okay, we're gonna open up now. I just wanna put just the tiniest little bead of, of high temp here. You know, the gasket scenario on this thing looked a little different than I'm used to. It, it almost kind of looked like a little bit of this would be appreciated. Okay, very thin. There's no reason to put a gigantic bead of that on there. And honestly, I probably could have just put it up in there and had zero issues. The quality of the FMF flange, I gotta say, and it's not very often you would say this with a Honda product, but remember, this is different. This isn't a, you know, a full-blown bike. Um, the quality of the FMF header, I gotta say, I think it's probably a little higher level. You know, this is more of an economy product, you know, for, for the Honda here. And we're not talking about a CBR 1000 double R. It wasn't horrible, but you could definitely see a little bit different than what I have come to expect over the years from Honda. Okay, finger tight. That's where we're going to stop, okay? Just kind of get the flange up against the head. I want to keep those nuts as even as possible. Good even pull there. Now, we'll be ready to come back here and mount up the canister and the header. We've got all of our mount bolts here. Okay, and we've got two that are going to go at the back. The chrome looking one is going to be back here. Um, we've got uh, this one here and one down here. And they used it, looks like on that stock canister, they had kind of a thicker fastener, I think, or sorry, thicker boss that it went through. I'm going to put the longer one down here and it's going to look better. I'm going to run this down. I'm not going to tighten it up all the way. Okay. So think about finger tight right around there. Back it off just so the thing can move around a little bit. Okay. And that usually helps to get the system lined up. Okay. Remember the band clamp from the stock Muffler, you're gonna reuse that. Okay, it fits right on here. You could put a little bit of sealing in here. Honestly, it goes together so well, I'm not really super worried about that. So I'm gonna pass on that, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and get her bolted up to the bike, because I feel like it should seal pretty well on its own. If it doesn't, we always have the ability to address that after the fact. Remember, with this too, this is probably one of several mufflers that will be put on this bike. And what I don't want to do is get myself in a situation where I'm going to pass on that washer. Ah, I got it all gooped up if we, in fact, take this off the bike and happen to sell the bike with something different. So, that said, okay, we've got her all mounted up. I'm going to finger tight everything with the exception of that clamp. That'll be the last thing I'll do. Okay, just kind of get that there, right, right there, perfect. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, why don't you start the ground beforehand? Well, everybody knows how quiet it is, all right? We've all seen one, we've all heard them. It literally sounds like a soulless moped, okay? And that has to change. It is not noisy enough to be my new favorite toy. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of use the wrench here and snug these. Remember, we want to try and get those as even of a pole as possible, okay? You don't want one threaded on a lot farther than the other, and there is no need to run this all down until you have completely crushed your flange, okay? If you're not comfortable with the tools, feel free to go for a torque wrench. If you watch my videos, you know I pretty much never use one. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and snug up the rest and I will finish with the clamp. There is a key step I haven't talked about yet, and it is before you start this exhaust. It is 
imperative you take the time to clean all your fingerprints off. Because if you don't, if you just get all excited and you start it up real quick, those fingerprints, the oil on your skin, they could burn right into the pipes and the FBI could use it to identify you down the road. We don't want that to happen now, do we? Okay, we're gonna finish up with our clamp. All right. Rotate that into position. Kind of holding it there. You don't need to go hog wild on this, okay? The goal is not to crush the pipe. The goal is to get that to seal. So you can see I am not going crazy with the torque there. If you torque that to a point where it oblongs, right? Where it kind of oval shapes your pipes, and it will do it. If you just really wrench it down, you're gonna create a leak, and we don't want that. When I come back, tools will be put away, system's gonna be cleaned off, and we're gonna start our ground. Okay, system clean, bike started. Let me tell you how I cleaned it, because I think this is relevant right now. The aluminum and the carbon, I cleaned that using WD. I clean that with brake cleaner and a rack. Clean it before you start it. You can hear that we've got it running. There is a sound insert in here. I rode it around a little bit. I'm gonna leave it because I think it sounds the best with this. You can hear it idle. Definitely a little more throaty. And certainly, off idle, now it's got a little soul. There you go, that's our first install on our 2015 STG Honda Grom project bike.